with all those recommendations. Is that what we did? Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, because we didn't. Yeah. Okay. We'll move, move through the recommendations. The council support the field service application to the regional connectivity program <coughs> to install LTE mobile phone and high speed internet to the Murrumbidgee Council local government area. The Murrumbidgee Council financial contribution be a one off contribution of $100,000 cash and $60,000 per annum. Two, council endorse the 15 points that must be met in holding an Australia Day event in the Murrumbidgee Council local government area for 2021. Three, the council object to the removal of Geraldry from the regional electorate of Albury and its inclusion into the Murray electorate. Four, the council conduct an online auction, auctioning cabins 3, 10, 11, 14, 16 and 18 for sale as is and removal from their current location. Five, uh, that Council accept the donation of the Geraldry Preschool play structure and install at the Yama Hall. And six, uh, ongoing water restrict, ongoing water, it's jumping, hang on. Ongoing water, raw water restrictions for Geraldry Township to be as follows, um, adhering to Eastern Daylight Savings Time. One, residential, 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. daily automated sprinklers or sprinklers on timers set to be no more than 120 minutes or handheld. Two, commercial, including council, 6 p.m. to 11 a.m. automated sprinklers and 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. daily, handheld or sprinklers on timers set to no more than 120 minutes. Outside of the Eastern Daylight Saving Time water restrictions, info to be inserted here. What's that info? <laughs> oh, yeah. What the? Um, what it is? To be determined. Well, or to to be um, yeah, as per uh, the current, so. current regime. Wow. Residents with automated water sprinkling systems to be requested to register with council their intent to water outside of the advertised time slot. Move Councillor Kerfee, seconded Councillor Smith. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item two, please. Sorry. Grant. This is a $15 million grant offered by the Department of Planning as part of its shared spaces program. Councils are invited to a project for up to $1 million, which delivers um, improved activation, beautification, and stimulates business recovery within the main street. The grant need to be delivered by 2022 and the applications are requested by basically mid January next year. Council wishes to lodge an application or a grant, then the project needs to be nominated and developed and scoped and will require a range of reports, um, including viability assessments, um, financial plans, and business plans. The report uh, recommends that Council, if they desire, lodge an application under the High Street Grant and nominate a project to be developed. Some of the projects that Council might be interested in are the Bolga Place redevelopment, perhaps a stage of that, um, the John Monash um, proposal uh, for street furniture and um, interpretive signage uh, and tree, uh, tree planting along the avenue at the intersection of Kidman Way and, and Sturt Highway at Darlington Point. Interested in what councils, which direction council might like to take. Okay, has anybody got comments for Kelly, please? And we'd like to speak to a project. Here's your opportunity. 
I did. I'd like to speak to the Monash um, pro as a project. Um, we have community representatives that have been trying to find funding for a Monash statue and um, it being over $200,000, they've had difficulty in obtaining any funding. And um, I felt that this particular avenue landed itself to expansion with that statue um, to en enhance um, our recognition of John Man Monash, which at the previous Jamildry Council was a priority. And I just thought that it was a, an apt avenue of funding. Thank you, Councillor Bryce. Any further nominations for projects? I'd like to support Councillor Bryce. I think that's a project that's really we're trying to achieve. And this is their opportunity, which is something that they've had long term goals. I think it's a good thing that we should support that. Well, further commentary? Well, given that John's assured me that there's enough money for Brogan Place, I'll support Place as well. Please speak up, please, Chris. <laughs> Given that John assures me that there is enough money for Brolga Place, I would like to support <coughs> Councillor Bryce's um, push for the John Monash statue. Okay. Any further commentary from the councillors, please? Councillor Brown. Yeah. Um, project in our town desperately is doing is cleaning up our traffic lines. It's just a that there is no plan, there's no, it's uh, distracting, uh, it's boring, it just needs all cleaning out, lawns laid and uh, some suitable paving each end and uh, would give the opportunity to put um, uh, RTA, what do they call themselves now, signs directing caravans and traffic to our main shopping centre where you should get people in the town. Can you be more specific as to which traffic islands you're referring to? The whole of Kingfisher Avenue. Right Kingfisher from the, Avenue. From the yeah. school all the way to the entrance. Okay. Okay. Are there any other further nominations or would somebody like to support or speak to Councillor Brown's nomination? No? Okay, um, Kelly, do we need to nominate one project or do yes, you? It's for one project. It's for one project. Okay, well, I guess the fair and equitable thing to do is to have a show of hands as to either it be the Monash project or the um, Traffic Island. Can I just ask a question about Pat's idea about the Traffic Islands first, please? Yeah, could you speak up, please? The, the Traffic Islands. The Monash um, statue is already, I gather, they've, they've got the scope of works for that already. They, they do have a plan, yes. We don't have a plan for the main street, even though I totally agree with Pat that they need refurbishing. I just think, given the time frames, would we have enough time to go about those works and get them done? Um, I think there's more chances getting a, a proper project developed for the John Monash um, concept. Um, and I also believe that that's clearly within the main street. So with the um, other proposal, there, perhaps there could be other funding opportunities, um, road to recovery. I, I, I mean, it is part of a road. Is anything available under that? We do. I'd have to check the Okay. At the end of the day, I think it'd be very difficult to get uh, to develop a project to undertake the costings, and we would need a, a design. And I think it'd be very challenging to to get that done um, by the time the grant closes. Okay. Is there any further comment around this? Are the people sitting at the table happy with that decision for the, the Monash project to be the one promoted for this grant opportunity? Just clarification, it's to be positioned at the old RSL. What? Yeah, it's got to be in the main street. To yep. The... yep. 
Okay. All right. Well, so um, the recommendation here is that Council lodge an application for the High Street grant and nominate the John Monash project mm -hmm. to be developed. Um, somebody like to move? Move Councillor Curphy, second to Councillor Bryce. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. Item three, please, Kelly. This is a policy that Council previously considered um, in a meeting. Uh, a draft policy has been prepared to guide um, and, and grant approval to mobile food vans on public land. The policy looks at some of the essential requirements, such as public liability, uh, vehicle, uh, standards for um, delivering or selling food and drink. Um, it's a standard policy. The approval is required under the, the Local Government Act and um, it gives us a basis to make a decision if people wish to set up um, mobile food vans, stationary vans within public spaces. Okay. Any comment? Any further comment? Any further clarification source? I'm concerned about other businesses in town, but we need a policy. Yes, there is a requirement there that they set up um, not only the exhibition, the total is to place it on public exhibition. So I, I'd imagine that we may get some submissions for, from businesses. Uh, in which case, we'll take those submissions into account and in our next report to the council, um, we'll provide comment to help council make a decision. Okay, further questions? Would somebody like to move? Move Councillor Black, seconded Councillor Smith. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. Item four, please, Kelly. Has been previously considered by the council. The policy adopts the standard template um, by the Department of Government with minimal changes. Um, the policy basically provides some guidance um, for how council deals with its own buildings in terms of um, buildings that actually have asbestos and how we manage those buildings, particularly contractors are doing work within those buildings. The policy also deals with uh, and provides some guidance to the community about um, identifying asbestos and how, for example, they might dispose of asbestos um, to ensure that they meet the um, environmental growth regulation. Okay, are there any questions of Kelly, please? Any further clarification or comment? If not, would somebody like to move? The recommendation which states the draft asbestos policy be adopted, adopted and an asbestos register and asbestos management plan be developed. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against? Oh, sorry. Somebody like to move, please. Move Councillor Bryce, seconded Councillor Brown. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against? Carry. Thank you. <laughs> Item five, please. Uh, thank you, Councillor Craig. Um, the reporting period is September 2019 to the 31st August 2020 for Council's Covenant Conduct Statistics uh, states zero. Um, so we've had no Code of Conduct complaints made within that period. Um, so this is just a recommendation that Council uh, be made aware that there was no conduct complaints made about councillors or the general manager during the period of 1st September 2019 to 31st of August 2020, and that these statistics have been reported to the Office of Local Government in accordance with the procedures and for administrating the model code of conduct. Somebody like to? Uh, is there any comment? Thought. Somebody like to move, please. Move, Councillor Chipperton, seconded, Councillor Gilbert. Do I need to read that again? No, I did that. Yeah, okay. I'm to give you a break. Thank you. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item six, please, Vicky. Uh, this 
was just reporting on the quarterly budget review for the period to the 30% variation uh, listed in there are substantially for uh, unexpended grants and uncompleted works as at the 30th of June to be included within the current year's document. A substantial amount of that is the longer community fund. That's basically about eight million of that. As uh, income, grant income as the expenditure is uh, utilised. And some two hundred thousand dollars worth of uncompleted works at the end of the financial year. Okay, are there any questions of Vicky, please, regarding this report? If not, I'll read the recommendation that states that the report be noted and the variance to the budgets as outlined in the attachment be approved. Somebody like to move, please. Move Councillor Brown, seconded Councillor Smith. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item seven. No, item, item seven is the um, making councillors aware of the uh, adverse event plan, which was a requirement of the um, the drought fund, the second round of the drought fund. They gave us $25,000 for whatever amount to be able to uh, devise the adverse event plan. We, um, we engaged Ramjo, who uh, delivered the plan on behalf of a number of councils in the region and also um, Armadale um, City Council are developing their adverse plan as well. And just sort of gave it, it was very cognizant throughout the whole thing not to reinvent the wheel, to call up all other procedures and policies that we've got that sort of give us a roadmap that we can grab to uh, uh, in case of advert, adverse event plans. So what happens now? Um, uh, this, is, this is a plan that we will use, um, but we'll also go to the federal government for them to review and comment on as well. So um, with that, we I also identified that when we put in our application that would, could possibly cost $50,000, we actually got the um, uh, got it delivered for $25,000. So there can be a reallocation of the $25,000. The recommendation is that we reallocate it to other milestones in the, um, the drought program which means we don't have to go back to the to the federal government, but there's also a possibility there if council wanted to um, use this $25,000, which is a minimum amount for any milestone, is $25,000, you can pick something that you can spend the $25,000 on, and we would go back to see if that would be accepted by the federal government as a new milestone to spend that money. Any questions? Councillor Brown. Um, yeah, with regard to the 25,000, uh, we've done um, a bit of work in our community garden and we have quite a few points that we are going to So it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's quite significant if we see something going. So that's a suggestion. Or so that, that's within our milestones anyway, so we could just run this money through and complete those things. Okay. Any further comment? Councillor Smith. Just with regards to the actual plan, yep. there is a comment about um, the community information and regional plan plan are to be finalised by graphic designers. Is that costing included? In the 25 yes. hours that we've already paid. Yes. Yeah, there's no additional no. cost. No. Further questions? No. Would somebody like to move the recommendation which states that the draft adverse event management plan be adopted by Council? And two, unextended funds of 25,000 initially allocated from the Drought Communities Program to the Adverse Event Management Plan be reallocated to the Town Revitalisation Projects. Councillor Smith. Councillor Smith, seconded Councillor Bryce. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against? Thank you. 
I'd have made, I got a, a, a message earlier this morning from Kelly to say that she couldn't, couldn't make it today, so I just put a recommendation that we lay this item on the table until Kelly comes back. Or yeah. that's what can we do with it? Sorry? What? Community radio, right? Hey? Yeah, it's a visitor radio. Yeah. Visitor radio, so. Can. I'm just going to say, just can it now. That's the recommendation. <laughs> Well, I think we should. I think we should, as John recommended, lay it on the table until Kelly is back here. She's the one who's been dealing with the, with the people or well, the person, and she can inform us as to uh, any proposed benefits or disbenefits. So I think we'll take John's advice. Yes, Gavin. I recommend to Okay. So um, the recommendation. Do we need to have a recommendation? Yeah, we can. Okay. okay. The recommendation for. This will be that we choose to uh, defer any conversation and decision regarding the Australian Visitor Radio until such time as our manager of EDNT is able to be with us and speak to us. Councillor Gilbert, seconded Councillor Smith. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item. Oh, these are reports of um, minutes of Council. Uh, the first one is the minutes of the Audit, Risk and Improvement Committee. Um, Councillor Smith, with a delegate to that, have you got anything to add? Nothing to add. Nothing to add. <coughs> Somebody like to move that these uh, are accepted? Moved Councillor Smith, seconded Councillor Bryce. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Oh. You've got to up the charter, yeah. So there's a new, the charter is being put in front of uh, um, council. It's unchanged from the last time we got to the charter. Um, Where's the recommendation? It is. It's within the thing. So the review, the recommend, the committee recommends to the council. There it is. Okay. Well, the recommendation reads that the committee, having reviewed the charter, recommends the charter be one confirmed, unchanged, pending the commencement of operation of section 428A of the Local Government Act 1993, and two presented to council for adoption. Moved, Councillor Smith. Seconded, Councillor Bryce. Any comment? If not, I'll put the recommendation. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against. Carried. Thank you. Item 10, please. Vicky. Okay, this is the uh, monthly cash investment report as at the 31st of October 2020. I will comment that the New South Wales Audit Office requested a copy of our monthly reports to ensure that we have not utilised funds that were restricted in any way as a result of other councils having done that. So, yeah, right. Don't trust one, don't trust all. No. Okay. Are there any questions of Vicky, please? No. We we have faith in you, Vicky. Okay. If not, I'll read the recommendation. Council note the monthly cash and investment report containing the bank balances and schedule of investments is at the 31st of October 2020. Somebody move, please. Councillor Smith, seconded Councillor Turkey. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. Item 11, please. Madam Mayor and Councillors, this item is simply to provide information to you um, that from 1st of January next year, all development applications complying development certificates or construction certificates will be required to be online, launched online through the Department of Planning portal. Um, at the moment, 
patients can be delivered to us face to face over the front counter. People might like to use them, or sometimes they electronically send them to us. That um, process will be gone, and basically, people will be directed to the planning portal and they will need to log their applications through that portal. They will need to fill out the application forms that will be provided uh, and submit required information. After that is done, it will, the proposed application will be emailed to one of the council officers. We will then review the information that they've submitted, including the plans, and we'll, at that point, we'll make a decision whether to accept it or to pass it back to them to provide additional information or improve clarity of the plans, et cetera. So this is a mandatory thing, and it will be affecting all councils in New South Wales. We've known for some time, or put it this way, we haven't known for some time, but we've suspected for some time that this is the direction the Department of Planning has been going. Right. Yes. So, is the Department of Planning assuming that everybody is who wants to lodge a development application has access to a computer and is totally computer literate? Um, well, we can suggest possibly. Um, one of the things that we talk about in this report is that um, I think we perhaps might need to provide a computer in each of the foyers of the offices. And there will be a transition period whereby individual officers will have to assist people um, to launch their applications. And, and we offer that service now. Um, I guess the bottom line is if they want that assistance, they're either going to have to get on the phone or we can meet with them in, in, in the office. Any further questions? Um, just going to inquire about the provision of the computers in the foyers. Um, for those that don't have access or the ability to, so that they can come in and be guided through the process by staff. Yeah. And what provision are we making to ensure that we're ready for that transition from the beginning of January? Well, we've been communicating that for a little bit. It's been on our social media, on our website, and we've had signs across the offices. There's also been some verbal communication with people, particularly some of the regular people that lodge applications with us. Most of them are aware of the changes anyway. Uh, in terms of where we put the computers, um, I'd imagine that's something we can budget for. At the very least, I think we'll probably have a computer at the front counter, um, whereby we might be able to wangle around and, and help somebody. But I think most councils have moved towards providing some type of a computer within their foyer area where space permits. Have you worked your way through one of these online um, submissions? Yes. Yeah. Are they fairly, does it roll through fairly well? Uh, yeah, providing, I guess the main stumbling block is the, the adequacy of the, the information that's provided in the application. And that's really no different to what happens now, whereby we, we screen. I mean, as far as possible, we encourage everybody to sit down with us or have a pre-conference meeting about their application. Particularly anything that involves more than, say, shopping, a brand or a um, so that people understand the sort of information that they're required to manage. So, Kelly, is it, is, it, is it smart if it goes through and says you're, you're, you're doing an application to build a shed in your backyard and you tick yes, and then the next question is upload the plans? If you don't upload the plans, does it allow you to move to the third question? Uh, I think you can, well, I don't know. I, I've, I've never had that issue. Um, at the end of the day, I've been in a situation where I've received the email with the finished application, and where there's been deficiencies, I've been able to generate it back. Right. Yeah, so. So I just wonder, it just, it, it, I just wonder if it's going to be smart enough to stop people in their tracks to say, to put the plans up. Yeah, but obviously so. not. So I it's haven't tried to you. watch it online myself, so I'm sorry. So but it's going to come back to you. You're going to see that there's no plans. You're going to send it back and say, bring your plans up. Yeah. All right. 
sure. And then, so how does that even eat into our 25 days or 45 days or whatever we got? Well, until it's formally lodged, and that means that we take it and we receive it, it's not formally lodged. So therefore, the time doesn't start. Oh, so the time doesn't start. So if they don't supply the information for six months, no. we're out, our days haven't started. Yeah. It's only when we receive it. Right. Councillor Kirkie. Yeah, the only, the only question I have to grapple with that is for people who obviously don't have a computer, so therefore they need a scanner yeah. to put in their plans. And is that all based on Acrobat PDF file or? Uh, well, I, I think that they would be able to submit plans in PDF file. That's the way I would imagine that they have to submit them. Um, if they can't, then what we would do, is we would look at their plans, we would scan them, and then they're able to submit them. Yeah, it wouldn't I, be I see that the biggest challenge. So they don't have a computer at home. You're not going to put it on a USB stick and write it down to the council tab and print it because right. I'll just do it at home. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Some people will come in with the, the map for the shed. We'll have to scan it for them and then put it into the system. Yeah, as well, a PDF. Most people who provide, they're, they're normally, you know, um, pull the frame sheds, you know, ramp sheds, desk sheds, what have you. They've got that information already. So they can provide it to the applicant in your quite So it will just be the location map. <coughs> the location map on the on the ground. On the site. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. A bit word for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean providing that's done, you know, we're happy with people drawing that themselves. It just has to be done to scale and has to show the significant features on the block. <coughs> I think the important thing to remember if anybody's speaking to us about it is to Please contact council if you require assistance. <coughs> Are there any further questions of Kelly? Councillor Brown. How many, how many people do you think are computer illiterate? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, probably the majority of people are illiterate. Well, there's um, uh, the stats, the, the stats of um, uh, literacy in, or computer connectivity or connection. Um, the Riverina Murray is the worst in New South Wales. It's the lowest, right? But uh, and that could be because um, they don't interact with devices or they don't have internet at home. Not that they don't have coverage, or it could be that they don't have coverage to get into those statistics. So we are the worst in in the Riverina Murray is the worst in New South Wales on the on the point score. But of those people that would be putting in applications, I've got no idea how many of them would be. Um, Computer illiterate, probably only a small number, um, but we'll, we'll assist anybody that can bring the desired stuff. That's, I think that's the thing. It's, it's not. It's 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 not even about not having a computer. It's about feeling confident enough to work your way through the process. Being able to navigate the process is. I think if people if people are. Um, confident that they can come in and speak to somebody at council, that will allay a lot of the fears or um, yeah, misconceptions about what, what is actually going to happen. And it's also about being educated on what is actually a requirement. Yeah. A pencil drawing is not a mud map is not acceptable. Wow. Of course. <laughs> Um, the other thing you might need to know, or that might reassure you somewhat, is that probably 50% of the people that lodge applications go through a point certifier. They can lodge applications on this to the council. Okay. Any further questions of Kelly, please? Um, the recommendation will read that the information contained in the online lodgement of development applications report be noted. And would somebody like to move, please? Councillor Bryce, seconded Councillor Black. Those in favour, please say aye. 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 Harry, thank you. That's done. Not on that one. Water City Council is the pay, worst council. Pay attention. For that. Oh, we're being recorded. Um, <laughs> item 12, please. This is just a case of what I've undertaken during the month of October. Take any questions? 
Are there any questions of Vicky's report, please? I think it's all pretty self-explanatory. If not, um, the recommendation will read the information contained in the finance manager's report, October 2020, be noted. Somebody move, please. Brown, seconded Councillor Smith. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carry. Thank you. Item 13, please. Madam Mayor and Councillors, I want to show you some of the stuff that I've been working on over the last month. I'm happy to show about any of those points to be a bit more detailed. Um, does anyone have any further questions? Um, we possibly may not have had a chance to read it in depth. Um, so obviously I'm still working on the streets of the places. Um, we've had some discussion regarding flood levels and fall height. Um, for and I was just, we were just at a meeting this morning um, about the flood study and particularly the planning implications in relation to that. Um, had, uh, uh, there's been some um, side inspections and some discussions about uh, the need for expansion joints or tunnels and the type of uh, foundations that build them on the side. And, the active areas, uh, and of course, it's, um, the general, you know, the typical types of compliance related issues. Um, I don't think I've got anything else uh, that probably is in the question. I just want to know how you deal with aggressive crows because I've got a heap. <laughs> we actually send somebody out to talk to the people who are throwing in food. Ah. So to inform them that not, can we ask them, we ask them to stop it? <laughs> so we don't feed the crows? <laughs> no. And we don't feed the ducks? No. no. No feeding the ducks. Would you like a sign? Because we've got three here. <laughs> we'll, we'll just paint out the, the duck bit and the crows. <laughs> well, there was a duck just down here in the carport the other day I saw and was reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Okay, so if there's no further commentary or questions, the recommendation will read that the information can the manager of planning and environment monthly report be noted. Somebody move, please. Councillor Chairman. Second. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. Item 14, please. On um, Sue's behalf, I'm happy to take back any questions you may have in relation to the report, the clarification, if Vicky or I can clarify it now. See how this drops at the end of the day. Is there any idea um, on when it is likely that the um, buses to Griffith will be reinstated? No. I just get, keep getting asked. So I guess, John, further to that question, um, is there an opportunity to put out a, a brief to the people that utilise these services and, you know, the respite services? And I think that they are very well kept in the loop. Um, our our um, community workers are contacting them every now and again to speak to them and see how they're going. They're still holding things. They're still helping those that need assistance at this point in time. They haven't been left. They're still delivering meals on wheels and chatting to them as well. We've put out a couple of communiques to them on various things that are happening. It's maybe not what they want to hear? Well, it's not so much that um, the ones that they're communicating with are probably not um, the group I'm thinking of that um, that may, they're older but they're independent. Yep. They just don't have a car but they're not in need of respite care or anything like that. They, they just use that to go, they use that as their way of going into town shopping yeah. but they, it's not. A, a huge drama, but they just would like to know. They were hoping that it would be sooner rather than later that it would be reinstated. 
Yep. Our um, strategy is vehicles and changing the way we do <laughs> this is yeah, still progressing. And if and if we uh, consider we could hold those meetings now, hold those meetings and have those discussions now, but I don't think we can hold those meetings just today to go through that. Councillor Smith. Um, I had a conversation with Interreach a little bit earlier, um, later last week, with regards where they are at as coming and speaking to community groups and, and they are nowhere near ready to take that next step of um, based on this. No. We're still... Thank you. Okay, so I guess that doesn't help the people who have no other means of doing what they need to do. Is there no other volunteer group or anything in Collie that could assist these people? Well, I took the tools into town the other day. <laughs> but it's a good job. I, I think that's, you know, in the interim, that's what we need to foster that, um, uh, just watching out for those most vulnerable and whatever, and that's that's all of our responsibility as community okay. members. But, you know, as far as sanctioning official channels, whatever, it's not on the radar yet, so we just have to be patient. Okay. Okay. John, anything else? Uh, any further questions for me to take next to If not, the recommendation that information contained in the Manager and Corporate Community Services monthly report be noted. I'd like to move. Move Councillor Brown. Seconded Councillor Wills. Those in favour, please say aye. Both against. Carried. Thank you. Item 15. And similar for Kelly Desenia, if there's any questions. Um, uh, we could probably speak about um, the event that was was held just in the past week in relation to environmental trails. If um, councillors don't have a book, uh, but you can ask, we've got some sitting over there. Kelly, uh, Julie, do we? Do we bring them over? No, we can go grab one though. Somebody doesn't on the car. Right. Oh, yep. Yeah, okay. they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, I was just wondering if um, we could have an update on the progress of the two new fledgling chambers to see if they're functioning or if they're not functioning. Or could we get an update on that, please? I know we've been told these external people are running it, but there's a high degree of uh, nobody's really got a clue what's going on out there. So, do you think we could? Get Good some right. information on that. That'd be great. I'll, I'll email that once I get that information. Thank you, councillors. Were there any further questions regarding this report? No. Okay. Well, the recommendation will read: the information contained in the Manager of Economic and Tourism Development monthly report be noted. Would somebody like to move, please? Move, Councillor Gilbert. Seconded, Councillor Bryce. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carry. Thirteen. Uh, <coughs> item sixteen, please. Steve. Hey, good afternoon. It's just the touch point. Can you just um, uh, flesh out some of those um, conversations we've had in relation to our two accreditation and, and options that you'll uh, go forth? What the, the, the difference is between you know, the four audits and the one audit and all that sort of stuff, just so Council is aware which way we're going or what we need? Yeah, so with the R2 accreditation, we've been working on our systems that we have in place at the moment with uh, Transport for New South Wales and uh, working on the uh, on the gaps that we're missing there. So the plan now is to have conversations between Transport and Council as well as with staff and uh, different aspects. And then early next year is to have the systems uh, audited by a third party. So it's part of the R2 accreditation. That. So we need to do that sort of early next year, so that gives us time by the have time by the end of June to sort out any issues that that come from those audits. So we have our systems up and certified by, by the end of June. Yeah, and there's there's um, uh, transport for New South Wales. Is, there's uh, we're doing the R2 accreditation for the RMCC. Um, uh, as opposed to the R2 accreditation for competitive tendering at this stage. 
So with the RMCC, we'd still be able to do any of our uh, our work or anything that they can give through the RMCC, so that even any any construction work that they wish to give underneath the RMCC would be covered by that after accreditation, rather than the fully fledged accreditation, um, which the for the for the competitive tendering R2 accreditation, I think it's four audits a year. Is it? Yeah, that's right. The RMCC requires us. The RMCC R2 accreditation requires us to do an audit once a year, and then the yeah. So the competitive tendering one is four times a year, which uh, is something we can, if we wanted to, in the future. So we're just going to take it the baby steps first. We'll do the R2 accreditation for the RMCC. We'll get all our systems in place, and if at any time there is an ability to do that, um, and when I say competitive tender, we'd be able to do kidney and way work under the RMCC, but if there was a Five kilometre stretch on the Newell Highway, and we wanted to go for that, then we'd have to go for the uh, competitive tendering R2 accreditation systems. They're exactly the same systems, they're just audited and fact checked. Just more requirements put on you to maintain the level of accreditation. And a lot of those things all fall in for those R2 accreditations is our health and safety procedures and our risk procedures and everything else like that, which is all part of everything that we're coming on board that we need anyway. So. Um, Steve, what is happening? Can you tell us about the progress of the Darlington Point office redevelopment? Yeah, so the guys are currently working in the main office section there, um, uh, adjusted the front counter, had uh, new benches and cupboards installed, uh, and the other contractors will be coming within the next few weeks and looking to have that section yeah, finished off uh, in the coming weeks. Okay, and then what is the next stage is? Well, the next stage would be the council chamber area. Okay. Um, so the toilets there. Toilet. So depending on how things are, are travelling, when when to start that, how many Christmas contractors are. Cool. Yeah. Councillor Kirkie. A uh, question about the RMCC work. Um, our plant and equipment. Does it have to be upgraded to, to meet the criteria of the RMCC with stock partners? And, and uh, majority of the equipment that comes out now is already equipped for those types of things. So, so we're already at that standard, so we don't have to go well, back and get things. We need to add that I to old uh, But yeah, majority of the new stuff that comes out will have that type of thing already. So that'll lead into our new, when we start buying new plants, they will have to meet all the requirements of our. It'll be something that we'll have to look at, yeah. Thanks, Steve. Councillor Brown. Steve, uh, just curious to know how uh, Paul's going and what the work's going. I'm sure that the contractor's been there doing some work for us now with the Kelly, so you haven't spoken to the whole. Well, yeah, I, I think it was a four week project, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably, probably the one two weeks away. Yeah, we need to make, we'll make contact with the employer for us. So that's something structural for the roof. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and we get in, find it, we get into the rest. Yep. Fixing those issues that have been identified in the roof. All right. So when will it be ready for other views? That's a lot way away, is it? Like this is only part one of it. Well, it depends on the additional. So it will be, still be uh, middle of like a few months away yet. We'll be painting and a few other things to tidy up inside first. Uh, we will look at the work that are going to be done after the structural yep. to see if there's any way we can open a part of that building to allow people to access it. Um, but we need to need, we need to understand the details of that and how it's going to be staged. Okay, are there any further questions of Steve? If not, the recommendation will read, the information contained in the Asset Manager monthly report be noted. Would somebody like to move, please? Move Councillor Chirgren, seconded Councillor Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. <coughs> Item 17, please. So on behalf of John, if there's any questions that you'd like me to get answers to, please ask. Councillor Smith. The purpose or the outcome of the collective meeting with Berrigan and Berrigan and Edward River Council? Uh, so um, that's in relation to a 
issue that I will talk to you about in confidence, if you like. Okay. <coughs> down for when we go. Um, any further um, questions of John, please, regarding the operations manager construction report? Councillor Kerfey. Uh, just an update with Ben Cumberland Avenue. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. well, what's our time frame on that work? So yeah, Ben, ben Coven Avenue is uh, due to start um, when we're back in January. Um, Channel Island Road, I think they're starting in December, are they? Do you know that? Oh, no, You're not up to, up to that. Right. They're to the construction. So that's, that's the last I had. Um, yeah. Did they have any, um, how long will it take for completion of that job? Yeah. Did they put a time frame on it? I think it was talking 12 weeks. Oh, I rounded it up. I think it said three months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 If not, uh, the recommendation will read the information contained in the operations manager construction monthly report be noted. Somebody move, please. Move Councillor Curthy, seconded Councillor Smith. Please say aye. aye. Goes against, carried. Thank you. Offer uh, item number 18, please. Standard report that we provide to you about the GAs that we've been dealing with. Uh, I probably can't give you too much detail about all of them. They're fairly minor. Uh, the Rathby Lane one is to do with the feed mob. They decided to replace and extend some of their um, infrastructure, silos, etc. Um, and we've already commenced doing some inspections on those. Uh, the other ones you know, you'd be aware of with the gym, that was just finalised in October. The others are just minor, minor outbuilding extension. Um, Kelly, I received an email from the gym, uh, the sweat box gym, um, just asking for uh, a progress report on what was happening. Where is it? You mean the works? Well, you know, is it is it happening? When's it happening? Whatever. They just said that they hadn't had any communication from council. Right. Um, just say COVID-19 COVID has been in the way. Yeah. yeah, I know, but they can see the redevelopment starting. They were just wanting to know what was going on. So, yeah. um, Well, we, we know that, that whole area has been pegged out. You know, yeah. they've, they've cut away mm -hmm. to level it out and things like that, and then they all ran away till the 23rd of November. Yeah. I know there wasn't so many. The issue that held up at the start, I think, was getting it to the council. Yeah. Um, it required consent. And there were a matter of, matter of issues they needed to resolve for the construction to be yep, finished. Yep. Um, but it should be right to go. Um, sometimes there are pre construction certificate matters that actually need to be sorted out. So I can have a look at those for you and advise. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it was and just if, if, the, the timing. We, we, the, the senior change rooms was going to be first cab off the rank. Yep. Then I think it was the gym was being part of it. And then we were doing the, the um, stadium uh, after that. And then in that way. Oh, I have some comments on you. The, the stadium and the AFL change rooms have time constraints about completion. Yeah. There's strong country community funds around two, which are due for completion by the end of March. So we gave right, that right, information right. to the to the contractors that they were the priorities. I don't have such a timeline on because that's totally out of stronger communities funds. So um, the other ones have definite um, agreements in place. So they were the priorities provided. All I'm asking is that perhaps somebody could contact Emma Shields was the contact. Okay. Could you yeah. please contact her, Kelly, and yeah. just let her know what's going on? Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice, nice Councilor. Just in um, DA. Double four twenty twenty says there's a shared in Chan Street to the value of seventy thousand dollars. Is that a correct entry or is it seventy thousand dollars? Oh probably would be. I'd imagine it would be seventy thousand. Seventy thousand dollars for a yeah, shared. It could be the fit out as well. Oh okay, yeah, no it's yep, yeah, just seems large for a shed, that's all. Okay. okay, are there any further questions? No? 
Well, the recommendation for item 18 will read, the information contained in the development applications approved under delegation, October 20th, <coughs> report be noted. Would somebody like to move, please? Move, Councillor Brown. Second, Councillor Smith. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. Item 19, please. Thank you, Kelly. It's the uh, biosecurity report for the for the previous month. The work's been carried out. There any questions of from um, Steve? No? Okay. Um, if, if there's no questions, the recommendation will read that the information contained in the biosecurity, say yards, truck wash and stock control report be noted. Somebody like to move, please. Move Councillor Brown, seconded Councillor Churgan. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. Item 20, please. Uh, same as item 20, if there's any questions of Joe or Will, please, I'll get back to you. Uh, you have one question in regards to the lead on from Kelly's report. Um, there was electric barbecue purchase for the current uh, swimming pool. Um, is there a time frame that that would be uh, they currently still have the gas one there, but the new one has been delivered, which is electrical, and we're just wondering where it's going to be installed nice. and where it's going to be installed. Thank you. Any further questions? Come notice? If not, um, the recommendation will read that the information contained in the works in progress report be noted. Would somebody like to move, please? Move Councillor Turgren. Seconded Councillor Bryce. Those in favour, please say aye. Oh. Those against, carried. Thank you. <coughs> Could I get yes. uh, a resolution, please, to move into confidence? Somebody like to move? Move Councillor Gilbert. Seconded Councillor Those in favour, please say aye. Those against? Thank you. Stop the recording, Julie. We have. Move to item 21, the Broadwood Place tender evaluation, and the recommendation will read: the council pursue the option of outright purchase of Echoport Shade Structure, PPA purchase PV and electrical equipment for Broadwood Place and the council building. Bracketed Echo Port Gullwing Design and Council Building Echo Port for $510,938.21 from Linked Group Services Propriety Limited, subject to the Council at a future meeting authorising the contracts of supply and agreements of PPA. Additionally, authorising the General Manager to engage legal and solar PPA experts to review all contracts and agreements to inform the future recommendations of the Council. Further, the Council authorised the General Manager to undertake the detailed designs of demolition and landscaping with all associated works until the completion being performed and or managed in-house. Somebody like to move, please. Move Councillor Churgwin. Seconded Councillor Curfee. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, carried. Thank you. That is the meeting. Thank you.